Hey everyone, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rohkat and welcome to the complete setup guide of Rio Jinx. In this video, you will find everything you need to know about the emulator Rio Jinx. I made a guide like this a couple months back, but a lot of things were left undiscussed. Plus the emulator itself has gone through a lot of changes. There are timestamps, so feel free to jump around to your desired section, but I do recommend watching the entire video if you want to understand this emulator in depth. So without further ado, let's get started. To give you guys some context, Text. These are the minimum specifications and these are the recommended specifications. Switch came in 2017 and soon after two emulators entered the scene. Yuzu came in January 2018 and then Ryujinx in February 2018. The Switch uses an NVIDIA Tegra X1 which is an SoC from Tegra family. X1 is the same SoC that was used in NVIDIA Shield. The chip features 256 GPU cores and a 64-bit CPU. It is also capable of doing 4K but then you're definitely stretching its capabilities. CPU cores are Cortex-A57 and A53 built on NVIDIA Maxwell architecture with underlying framework from AHM. Switch OLED models feature the same architecture architecture but it's relatively more powerful. Ryujinx took a well-informed approach and wrote the emulator in C Sharp. In my opinion, the hardware isn't that hard to emulate, but the shader manipulation is tricky. It translates ARM code into x86 code by doing a few enhancements. It's been a while since I made the last guide and a lot of things have changed since then and most of them for the better. They have tweaked their mapping mechanisms and enhanced the translation processes. The biggest noticeable change is with the PPTC. By optimizing this, you can eliminate the occasional recompilation. I won't go into much detail but I do encourage you to read the full article from Ryujinx. Oh and also they got Vulcan. Let's first download Ryujinx from its official website. The devs have a pretty good release cycle going on so we're only gonna download the official version instead of any nightly builds for stability reasons. After downloading, we need to install Visual Redistributable C++ 2010 to 2019, x86 and x64 versions. Links are in the description. So we're just gonna download that and hopefully it'll be done soon. So we have the emulator downloaded and I've extracted it into my emulators directory. So I'm just gonna try to launch it and let's see what happens. Okay, so it should launch soon. Now I'm getting an error, keys not found. So basically what it's asking me is the switch keys. We need a file called prod.keys. Every switch console has digital keys in its core to which it uses to validate the piece of software that's being run on the console. So it's like a security mechanism to detect counterfeit products and maintain the integrity of the console. That's why it's required by reusing. Technically you would be able to run unauthorized dumps without the keys, but Nintendo is one of the strictest companies when it comes to this so they would without a doubt shut down Ryujinx as it would then be responsible in aiding piracy. There's no law against a standalone emulator but that's an entirely separate video. You can easily find keys if you google them of course. Um, some of the older links get unvalidated and removed but they always get updated. But I don't recommend you do this because it is illegal. The only legal way to put the keys is by dumping your own from the Nintendo Switch that you own and the guide to that is in the description. So right now I'm just gonna put the keys in the system directory and here's how you do it after you've extracted the keys just go to your directory and put the product keys in the system it should be good to go I want to show you guys a pretty common error that can occur in your emulator. I have put my keys in the system directory and everything's normal and Ryujinx launches without any warning or prompt. But watch what happens when I try to install the firmware. It gives me a parsing error because the contents of my keys files are invalid and outdated so it can't parse through the firmware's content. Normally when you update your Switch console's firmware, the keys also get updated but if you download them, chances are the keys are outdated so you can either install an older firmware in respect to your keys or you can put updated keys and install the latest firmware. Alright after we get the prod.keys sorted we need to install the firmware and the way you do that is you go to tools install firmware and you can either install it from an XCI file or a zip file or we can extract those files and install them from a directory. It really depends on how you dump your firmware. Alright now that we have all of our prerequisites set up let's have a look at the Rio UI. Um, it is launching without any errors so we're just gonna go into file and let's see what we got here. Load application from file. We can either load a XCI or NSP file. 
Um, it can be any software for Nintendo Switch, can be a game or anything like that. Load unpacked games. So if you've chosen a different method to dump your Nintendo Switch games into your PC, it might be unpacked. So it might not be in an XEI or NSP file. It might uh, be in a bunch of other contents. So you can load from there. Next up, we have load applet and we have me editor. So I'm just going to go in there and show you what we're working with so we can basically create a virtual avatar for ourselves some games require that it's just like nintendo switch console where you can create your own avatar for me personally i'm not gonna bother but for games that do require it you can create it here next up we have open reusing folder so if you want to open the reusing file system folder it says right there and we have open logs folder if you want to forward your logs to reusing steam if you are a patreon supporter or you want to get support from someone else by all means in options we have enter full screen so you can enter full screen pretty self-explanatory start games in full screen mode so if you don't like games starting out like this you can always start them in full screen mode enable gui columns so these are all of our columns and we can choose some of them and also remove some of them depending on their usability and we have settings we're gonna go in into that in just a little bit and we have manage user profiles so you can create different user profiles and then for some reason you can manage them <laughs> Um, install firmware, um, we've already gone over this and in help we have check for updates which is a pretty nifty feature and about section which tells us all about the authors and the roadmaps etc. Now that we have the UI covered let's jump into settings, the meat and potatoes of the tutorial. First up we have general settings and the first option we have is enable discord rich presence. It's a feature in discord. So if you stream at discord, you might want to enable or disable that depending on your preference. Check for updates on launch, pretty self-explanatory. Show confirm exit dialog. So when you want to exit it, it's going to show you a confirmation dialog. So you can go from there. Hide cursor on idle. So when your cursor is inactive, kind of like right now. It's just gonna hide the cursor, just to avoid any distractions. We also have game directories, so if you like to put all of your games in one directory, you can add a single directory or multiple directories. It will try to list the games. In themes, we have used custom theme, and we can also provide it a custom theme path, but we're not gonna bother with any themes. In input with the controller setting, we have enabled dock mode, so we can either enable or disable that. It's gonna emulate the switch dock mode, the console's dock mode. We have up to eight players and a handheld, so you can either configure a handheld or a player one. So we're just gonna configure player one. In input device, we have all keyboards. Controller type, you can use um, one of these. Some games can benefit from pro controller and stuff like that. In profile, we have default because I haven't made any profile. You can create a profile by clicking add or load a profile, or you can also remove a previously made profile. If we go into handheld settings, you can see that input device is disabled because I only got my keyboard connected to it. I don't use controller, but if you do, by all means, this is where you would um, adjust all the settings. You can also make profiles for them as we did in the keyboard section. In system settings, we have our system region. I've selected it to USA and system language American English. This is a time zone. Some games might depend on it. So the first option we have here is enable VSync. If you get screen sharing effects for some reason, you're gonna wanna enable VSync because then it'll get rid of the most of the screen sharing effects. But I should mention that it will take a toll on your performance. So be careful with this option. So if you have a low-end PC, um, I won't recommend enabling this because even if you get some screen tearing effects, it's worth the extra performance. Next up we have enable PPTC which is profile persistent translation cache and to make this simpler it's gonna store a profile of memory addresses and it's gonna cache some translated functions. So basically what that means is it's not gonna go through that process of translating functions every time because it's already gonna have translated functions cached in its memory and uh, games are gonna load faster because it is closer to the switch console itself We're always gonna have PPTC enabled unless it gives you a specific error regarding a game in which it is incompatible 
I haven't seen that case, but if you come across that, you can disable it, but you will always enable PPTC. Then we have enable FS integrity checks, so file system integrity checks. This feature will let you know that the data you're providing it, it's not actually accurate or validated. So when you're troubleshooting, you know that it is the dump that is causing the problem. Next up, we have audio backend. It's selected at SDL2. In my specific case, I've had the best experience with OpenAL, but you might want to play with these plugins and see what works best for you. Then we have memory manager mode, which is software, host, or host unchecked. So in memory manager mode, we have three options, software, host, and host checked are fastest but unsafe. Software is going to provide you with the most accurate experience, but it's also going to be the slowest one. Host is going to be a little bit faster, but host unchecked with no constraints is going to be the fastest, where it's going to give you performance oriented JIT just in time compilation. So I recommend leaving it to host unchecked, but if you run into some issues and you're experimenting with your options, you might want to leave it to host. But I think most games are compatible with this setting. Okay, next up we have hacks. It says these may cause instability. I know, expand dynamic RAM size to six gigabytes. So you can actually expand it to six gigabytes. It's normally four gigabytes as it says right here. So it might help with some games that suffer from RAM starvation problem, but I'm not aware of those games, but you might want to experiment with this regardless. Then we have ignore missing services. So it's enabling or disabling or missing services, pretty self-explanatory. All right, next up we have graphics and in enhancements, we have enabled shader cache, which we're always gonna be enabled because we, we need our shader cache. If you're doing some debugging or for some reason, you're just experimenting and trying to get a bottom of a specific issue, you might wanna disable it, but you will always leave it enabled. Anisotropic filtering, we're not gonna mess with it. We're just gonna leave it to auto. You can also specify 2X and I think 2x is the sweet spot if you go 4x to 16x it just looks very very artificial the game loses its organic and natural element and looks very artificial and upscaled next up we have resolution scale we have native 720p 1080p i think even for the high-end pc this is a sweet spot especially considering we're using ryujinx and then we have aspect ratio 16 by 9 so in features we have graphics back and multi-threading and it's set to auto so we're not gonna mess with that we can we can either turn it off or on again if you're trying to get a bottom of a specific issue you can turn it on or off we're gonna let it auto decide and then we have developer options so if we want to specify a specific path in graphics shader dump path you can do it here but these are developer options and we're not going to go into them so you might be wondering where is the back end where do we select opengl or vulcan or direct 3d the answer is rio jinx master build is still on opengl which is the most accurate render by far so that's why it's always going to default to opengl we're going to go into vulcan in just a little bit but for the master build it is still limited to opengl that's why we don't have any performance oriented options because most of the stuff is already built into ryujinx itself and then we have logging if for some reason you want to mess with logging you can enable logging to file um, if you're trying to get a log of everything that's happening on your emulator, it's good to enable all of them. And then we can get an accurate log file. All right, so that was all of our options. All right, let's talk about Vulkan Backend. Support for Vulkan Backend was announced some time ago, and the team since then has released a couple of builds with Vulkan Backend. I should mention that this is a very early release version and you shouldn't depend on it for performance because it is still in early stages. And as we go along, hopefully, it's gonna be reabsorbed into the Ryujinx master build. So we're not gonna have um, a separate build for Vulkan. If you're curious, here's how you download it. You go to the GitHub page of Ryujinx. You can download it from there. Massive shout out to GDK Chan. All right, let's launch it and see what we've got. If you go into options, settings, and graphics, we have graphics backend. Normally select to OpenGL, but we can select to Vulkan. So select to Vulkan and basically that's how you do it. I think for most of your games, if your PC is mid-end, OpenGL is gonna work just fine. But if you have a relatively low-end PC, you might wanna go with Vulkan because it can give you some performance enhancements. All right, now we're gonna download the online version of Ryujin so you can play multiplayer. To 
do that, we just have to go to their Patreon page and I'm also gonna include a link in the description and go to LDN. So it's right here and we're gonna download it from here. Downloaded the LDN version. We can actually see that there's a multiplayer tab. So if we go into settings and multiplayer, we have a mode setting. So from here, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have modes to Rio Jinx LDN and we have an option to disable P2P. I don't know why you would, um, but for, for some reason you might want to disable it. We have network passphrase. So if you create a room and you need a passphrase, enable LAN connectivity. I have a Wi-Fi connector, so I don't have um, LAN connectivity. Network interface, you can select a specific network. So for example, let's say, you have LAN and you have Wi-Fi and you might have a USB connection, um, internet connection. So if you want to select a specific one or the fastest one, you can do it from here. So there you have it, guys. Basically, there are three releases of Rio Jeans. First is the master build, which is the normal build and the most stable build and I, the one that I actually recommend using. The second is Vulcan build, which is still work in progress, mind you. It is still in very early stages and we're just gonna wait till it actually goes through some iterations to be more competent than it already is. Third one is the LDN, the online multiplayer build. Now we have three builds. Hopefully soon in the future, they will all be reabsorbed into master build. So you're only gonna have one build, which is master build, and you're gonna have multiplayer options and Vulcan options in the same build, which is gonna be much more performance optimized and accessible. Okay, now we're gonna test the game and see what the performance is like. All right, it crashed. See what I mean by Vulcan not being stable? It could be because of my own configurations, but this is a RTX 3080 Ti. Now let's try with the normal release. The performance is looking competent and I'm getting about 30 FPS. So if you're planning to mess with these three different versions, I recommend that you set them up in different repositories. Let's try Super Mario Maker 2. So there we have it guys, the complete guide to Ryu Jinx. I will try and update these guides when new performance oriented features come out. But I will skip the entire architectural and emulation lecture. And if you want to know more, you can always come back to this video. I will focus more on performance and what's new. Even with this guide, you might run into some issues. So feel free to drop a comment and I will try my best to help out, hopefully. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.